Arson down. The time commitment that it takes to be a volunteer is significant. There's over 180 hours worth of training that needs to be done before a volunteer firefighter can be a volunteer firefighter. Um, and doing that, that training within a period of time where you're balancing work, balancing family, and balancing whatever hobbies you have at home can be extremely difficult. Pennsylvania's first responders offer their time and risk their lives to protect people and property. But they're facing incredible challenges in recruiting and retaining volunteers. In fact, the Commonwealth had nearly 300,000 emergency responders in the 1970s. Today, there are only about 37,000, leaving the possibility of a day when a 911 call goes unanswered. There's a lot of ways to give back to the community, but for me, doing it through the fire department has been very rewarding, um, and, and I thoroughly enjoy it. But I'm getting older, um, you know, we, we need younger people to get interested in it and, and you know, stick with it. A commission was created to study the problem and recommend solutions. When we finished up our, our SR6 commission work, a lot of the firefighters and, and, and first responders said to me, don't let this port, the report be written and then put on a shelf somewhere with no action taken on it. And I made a commitment to them that we were going to get as many of these recommendations passed into law as possible. Over the past two weeks, the House made good on its promise to help our fire and EMS personnel by passing more than a dozen bills. Among the benefits are tax breaks and tuition assistance to recruit and retain members, as well as ways for companies to access more money for equipment and training. There's a package of compromise bills that addresses a lot of the concerns of our first responders in an area such as mine where, where it is very rural. We have a lot of fire companies and uh, we have a lot of EMS services that are, that are very sporadic and they cover a lot of ground. Now this doesn't, this doesn't fix everything, but this is the first step I think that we're taking to address a lot of the concerns of those first responders, letting them know that we do care, we are listening, and we're working towards uh, making their lives easier because we appreciate everything they're doing. At some point, um, you will need an EMS or you will need a fire service and we're doing everything we can to protect those services and help those people uh, keep their doors open. It's completely flattering to be recognized by so many pieces of legislation through the House and knowing that, hey, people are going to start looking out for us and have a vested interest in making sure that we succeed.